we are here today with Senator Keith Pickard of the great silver state of Nevada. Uh, and Senator Pickard, uh, first of all, thank you for taking the time to talk with us today. Um, you bet. Senator Pickard is the uh, president of the National Council of Legislators from Gaming States. Uh, and he's going to be able to talk to us from a national perspective today about what we might expect in the year 2021 in the, the uh, legis uh, state 50 state capitals. Uh, and Senator, to begin with, uh, your organization, which goes by the, sh the nickname of Nickel G, which is a lot easier to pronounce, uh, is probably not known to a lot of people. Can you describe to us who Nickel G is and what you do? Sure. Uh, Nickel G is an, uh, uh, we're, we're an organization that was formed many years ago as we could see that uh, gaming or gambling, as it used to be known, uh, was expanding across the country. Uh, you know, of course, uh, Las Vegas uh, was where it really took off. Uh, there's been gambling since uh, the beginning of time, but in terms of legalized, regulated gambling, uh, Nevada led the way uh, back in, from back in the 30s. And uh, then of course, uh, New Jersey and Atlantic City started picking up a little bit. And that's where it sat for decades. And then as uh, particularly as the uh, uh, tribal gaming picked up and then uh, we started seeing states uh, enacting lotteries and, and things, uh, we, we started recognizing that there was a need for some uniformity as opposed to the patchwork that uh, existed up to that point. We thought it a wise idea. Well, the founders, uh, Steve Geller and others, uh, thought that it wise to involve the legislators in an opportunity to discuss what it was that we do. And so uh, we had representatives from uh, really all over the country get together uh, and to create a space in which we could talk about uh, the best practices in, in gaming regulation. And it has grown since to include uh, uh, many states, uh, particularly uh, after we saw the uh, PASPA, the uh, um, sports betting uh, was, uh, um, uh, sorry, I've got the leaf blower outside my window that I didn't plan on. Um, uh, but uh, when PASPA was struck down by the Supreme Court, uh, which was a limitation on the ability of uh, uh, states to allow gaming on uh, sports. Uh, we, of course, had sports books in Nevada for some time, uh, but it was a uh, uh, because PASPA was passed long after we had sports books and New Jersey had sports books and a few other states had some. Uh, we were grandfathered in. We, you know, we were carved out of that legislation, and so uh, when PASPA was struck down. Uh, states really needed some guidance in, in how best to handle this because what was anticipated was kind of an explosion of uh, states getting into that space. And so we offered that opportunity for them to come in, sit with us. Uh, so for the past several conferences, right up until COVID struck, uh, that was one of the main topics of conversation. And we invited other uh, legislators and regulators to come in and talk about best practices. And then, of course, we are a resource uh, for anyone that has uh, any questions as to uh, gambling. And that's from the, the statutory side, the regulatory side, or even the problem gambling uh, treatment side, how we address gaming in the United States as a holistic uh, approach. So Nickel G's was founded to start that conversation and to be a resource to legislators and regulators in that effort. Uh, and what are some of the priorities that you see on the legislative agenda for Nickel G or specific states this year? Well, of course, Nickel G's doesn't draft legislation. Uh, we provide the opportunity for, for uh, individual regulators and, and uh, legislators to learn about what the best practices are, what states have learned, mistakes that have been made that uh, we want to avoid. Uh, things like that. And so when we're talking about uh, uh, the conferences that we do, it's about educating. Now, uh, we, we think that states are going to continue to address uh, sports betting. We're, we do expect an expansion uh, into other states. 
Uh, and that's also going to make a play into other uh, um, uh, lottery forms uh, because they're starting to do more things, uh, scratch off tickets and, and different things that they'll engage in. And so uh, uh, I do think we're going to see an expansion there. I know that some of the tribal gaming uh, operations are looking to expand as well into uh, other uh, uh, tribal environments uh, that don't currently possess it. So we're not expecting to see a wholesale change like we did in the last two years uh, where sports betting has come in, but we do think that there will be a significant expansion, particularly as states are looking for new revenue sources to make up for uh, what uh, the uh, economic shutdowns have done uh, to their economies. As gaming prolifer proliferates and check technology changes, um, there are increasing concerns about how do we address problem gambling, responsible gaming? What are some of the trends in that area? Sure, and, and that's something that uh, Nickel G's takes pretty seriously as well. In fact, in the last many, I've, I've been attending for four years now uh, on a regular basis, and uh, each year we've had anywhere from one to three panel discussions on different aspects of, of how we approach uh, problem gaming or responsible gaming. Um, and a lot of that comes from uh, knowing your customer and uh, the debates, for example, in, in particularly when we look at sports betting and how uh, the online uh, or mobile applications uh, interact, um, knowing that customer becomes increasingly difficult. So uh, the debate has focused around, do we require them to come into a uh, brick and mortar facility, whether it be a casino or another uh, uh, facility? so that they can establish a relationship first and then operate? Or do we rely on the technologies that are currently available for identification, uh, location? Uh, uh, because one of the things that we need to make sure we can do is we can fence off areas so that uh, uh, someone outside of a particular jurisdiction um, uh, isn't allowed to do uh, what is allowed within that jurisdiction. So for example, if I were up in, uh, uh, Reno, uh, I could uh, get on our uh, uh, or the William Hill uh, Sportsbook uh, uh, online or mobile application. I could establish my relationship with them. I could do the uh, work uh, uh, on my mobile phone. But if I were to say go to Lake Tahoe, California, which is just a stone's throw away, the geofencing capability is quite good. And as soon as I, I'm you know, about 10 feet over the uh, the state line, I'm no longer able to do that. So it's those sorts of things that I think technology is going to help us do to limit who has access. Uh, but I, it's still an evolving technology and an evolving market. Uh, but I do see that as the market of the future. I think more and more we're going to see online and, and mobile applications take over. Um, uh, and I know there are certain people uh, here in my state that uh, resist that. Uh, but I do think that the market's pushing that direction. We see that all over the world. And so I don't think it'll be different here. Yeah, one of the things I think is interesting is that uh, not many years ago, online gaming was looked at as something to be, to maybe worry about. And, and now technology has advanced to the point, as, as you allude to, that it actually can build in safeguards. You can have exclusions, you can have bet limits, you can track play and those sorts of things. Sure, in fact, you can do a better job in some respects identifying uh, those that uh, maybe are struggling, uh, uh, maybe they have a problem. You can track those things more accurately with the online applications than you can necessarily in a, uh, a brick and mortar casino, however, uh, we also know that the vast majority of the illegal operations are done online and uh, they take billions and billions of dollars out of the market away from uh, regulated sources and they have no restrictions. They don't care uh, who's getting hurt in the process. And so we're not there yet. We've got a long ways to go, I think, before we can feel safe online in that respect. But you're right, I do think that technology is moving in that direction. And pretty soon we're going to get to a point where I think everyone will be comfortable um, uh, to some extent. What other kinds of issues is Nickel G addressing that maybe the general 
public or even the informed public might not be as aware of? Well, I think that it really comes down to understanding the details of the, the legislation and the regulation and how they interact uh, with the consumer. Uh, most people look at this just from you know, what they see on their phone uh, or what they see in the casinos. And there is so much more. That's literally the tip of the iceberg. And Nickel G's is able to dive deeper and talk about and, and educate on things that are uh, uh, more important to the legislators. Now, it's not like we go into a panel discussion and we talk about the details of legislation. We don't. In the conferences, we stay uh, uh, at the higher level talking about what the issues are and then point to certain things that might be helpful to the legislators. Then it's about creating a relationship so that if someone say from the state of, of uh, Massachusetts or Connecticut, uh, uh, who's not currently in a, a big sort of way active in this market, wanted to come in and say they were going to introduce sports books. Uh, well, they then can develop the relationships with the Nevada and the New Jersey and the Florida representatives uh, who can guide them through. We, I mean, we've done it. We've made all those mistakes. And then we can uh, uh, help them in their legislation. Because we also recognize, even though we like to consider ourselves the gold, or I guess now we're calling ourselves the platinum standard in the market, the reality is what works for us won't work for any other state. There are gonna be a lot of similarities. And so we can look at those things and we can help them understand what mistakes we made, where we made uh, maybe some tactical errors, or maybe they weren't errors, but we learned through the process that maybe we can do it better. They then have an ability to step in at a higher level and, and make it happen. That's really what Nickel G's is all about. Okay, well, Senator Pickard, we uh, appreciate your time with very good overview. Thank you. You're welcome. Anytime.